We use two different types of robots. One's kind of infant-sized and human-like. It looks kind of like a little person and the other one is more like a robot vacuum cleaner with lots of things stacked on top of it. If a parent sticks out their tongue, for example, a child might be more inclined to stick out their tongue more often. There are some studies about things like that and also maybe placing or removing a puppet from a parent's finger. And we're looking at something similar in some of our past work where we were using a robot that now, a small human-sized humanoid robot, to teach a child different kicking motions that would help them uh, take their first steps later on. These robots have something special, some special sauce that makes kids stand up more and move around more. So we're still thinking about and designing studies to show kind of what that advantage looks like and how powerful it is. There are a lot of individual differences to think about when we design robots. So one thing we want the robots to be able to do is sense things about their environment and their user and adapt to what they're seeing. Uh, maybe things like the child's moving a lot, the child's not moving very much, and change what they're doing based on that to help each individual user in the best way possible. So whether we're working with kids with disabilities or kids with typical development, that's something we want all of our robotic systems to do. kind of a funny and interesting question. With that, it's more like a, a really cool state-of-the-art baby toy than uh, a social robot that looks and seems like a human being itself. So we think it will be okay. We won't have robot-style robot, robot style babies who are talking like a robot later on or, or things like that. One that I like a lot that we saw in a playgroup was uh, children doing phone play with robots. So there was a toy phone they held it up to the side of the robot that kind of looks like a vacuum cleaner. It doesn't have a clear face. It's not necessarily very humanoid. And they pretended that the robot was picking up the phone and saying hello. So <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I think we're missing a lot of voices. Many folks who are underrepresented in STEM and engineering at large are also underrepresented in robotics. So engaging with students, particularly supporting women and members of different racial minorities, is something we're really interested in and passionate about. We run a Research Experiences for Undergraduates program here at Oregon State in Robotics. And we also work with, at least in my lab, a lot of students from different undergraduate research programs. So things like URSA through the Undergraduate Research Office, the STEM Leaders Program, and other ways as well, maybe through capstone projects or honors theses. Great question. So I think for now, the, the babies will win. In some of our past playgroups, the children actually learned to turn the robot off. They found the off switch, and we had to design and print a new cover to protect the robots. <laughs>